Hi, guys. I am thrilled to be on with you today and share with you on my YouTube channel, the Donna Dewberry YouTube channel. It's all about painting, but I like to draw and teach people how to draw so that they can do their painting and create their own designs as they're drawing. So don't go away. I'm going to start doing a big, beautiful bee, as you probably saw in the thumbnail. And let's do um, shading and I'll help you learn where you would shade and float when you're painting. So I'm not teaching you how to draw this perfect face with pencil or color pencil. I am teaching you how to draw and design so you can paint. How's that sound? And some people just like the way they draw and that's all right too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move our camera to go to the overhead camera and show you some supplies that are really important to use while we're drawing. Okay, so let's go to my overhead camera and we are going to get started. Okay, so there we are. This is a great way when you want to do something and just sit and sketch. I used to sketch a lot when, you know, um, when you're sitting idly in a plane or, or um, on a drive somewhere, I, it gets kind of bumpy that way. But anyway, it is something that you can doodle. I used to doodle a lot. So now what I'm going to show you, I'm going to be up here so you can see the whole pad. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get my brushes out of the way. All right. Because we're drawing today. All right. Now, this is a, a pad. This pad um, doesn't matter if I'm not going to paint on it, but I do paint on them too. This is a nine by 12 and it's an 80 pounds. So it's got a little bit of texture. It's a multimedia pad, but there's great uh, shades in here. So from black to gray to a darker gray on off white and white. All right. So that's the pad I'm going to be using. And then I want to share with you, this is um, one of the sheets out of there. That's like not the white, but the next one down. Um, there are these stumps that are important. And I use my finger a lot, but these stumps help shade. So that would be where you'd want to float when you're painting. All right. So I'm not going to give you too much of that detail right now. You need a white eraser. All right. I love the Moo erasers, but sometimes I can't get those. So I have these packages. All of this you can get on my onestroke.com site. And it's listed right here in the YouTube channel. All right. Then I love just as a starting out inexpensive set of pencils. And these go, there's 12 different hardnesses. All right. I know that's probably not what it's called officially, but I just want you to see that there's the H is hard. So 2H, 3H, and then, um, then there's B on here. So let's, I'll just show you and talk to you about the pencils. But as I'm, I'm using these pencils, I am going to pick up and show you the difference of some of them as we go. All right, so let's just look for a regular two. All right, so I wanna show you a two hard, two H, and a 2B, all right? So the B is softer, all right? There's all kinds of detail of why that is, but I'm just gonna uh, start out and share with you. All right, so I'm gonna do a big bumblebee. And bees are real popular, so that's, I'm gonna start out like that. And I'm gonna do him oversized. So we're gonna do, I want you to lightly sketch. I'm doing heavier so you can see, all right? And I'm doing it heavier so you can see on the screen, but you should be lightly doing this when we're first doing that. Some of my grandchildren, their problem is that they push really hard and then you can't erase it well. And so if you're lightly sketching, you can erase it without any problem. All right, so then, then we're gonna have a little part of his face right there. This is part of his head, all right? And then we have his antenna and we're gonna do a little dot here and pull the antenna over. So if you get pencil and paper, even if you've got just a plain pencil around the house, a number two pencil, and then you just get a piece of even line paper and just draw this with me, okay? 
All right. So then right in here, see, I'm going to sketch it first. Right in here is the top area of his head. So to get a circle, sometimes I just go over and over and over. And when you're all done with that, even if it's not exactly even there, it ends up getting you a nice, good round. Okay. Now, what we want to do from there is he has this fun body that's kind of plump. Okay. So I'm going to come right in here. Oops. Right in here and curve down right there all right and then let's go out for this plump body because what's the prettiest part of this bee is his striped body and his pretty wings sketch 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 you see that sketch all right now, as I'm doing this, I can come in here and shade. See how the stump, this stump, let me tell you what it is. It is rolled up really fine, tight rolled paper. And you can sharpen it like on a piece of sandpaper. You can take sandpaper and take off some of the lead and sharpen it back up, see? All right, so I'm not gonna do any more of this right now. I just want you to see that we're gonna come back and shade it later. But I also use my finger if you don't have a stump right now. Okay, use your finger and work on it that way. But you'll love how fun these stumps are and they're very, very inexpensive. If you can't find them, be sure to go to my website. You can get it all at one time. Okay. Now, we're going to do a lot more shading on there, but I'm just getting to that point for you. Okay, now he's really big. See my hand? So I spread my hand, and he's from here to here, spread five fingers, right? Because lots of people don't quite get it. Um, he could be plumper down here, but we'll start like this, okay? Now, what's going to happen is we're going to have a glare right in here. And I'm going to kind of do reverse, okay? And right in here is a glare on the black that you have, all right? So we're gonna shade that a little bit later, but right in here is kind of shiny and right in here is shiny. And we're gonna blend that in. And now what's gonna happen is I would paint this all black and then come in here and with a chisel of the brush, go back and forth with yellows and whites. I'll have to paint this in my painting class and then y'all can refer back to it. We'll take you there. But right now it's all about, let's see where we would shade. Now see shading here makes it look like it goes around. Okay. And then this is licorice again. And see I'm zigzagging, zigzag, zigzag, zigzag back and forth. Okay, then you can stand. Oh, I've been with a 2B this whole time. I will use the other two. I want you to play a lot, play with the 12 different sizes because you'll find one that's your favorite. Okay, all right, then I'm going to come down here. And here's the little stinger. Okay, now what's going to happen is out here. And out here, away from where the wings are going to go, you're going to find that this is his little legs, okay? And then sometimes up here from where the head, when all this in here hits where the head is, we are 
going sometimes because sometimes it's just under the body. You can put the little front of the paws. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is right in this round area, we're going to come in here and put the first wing. So this wing is going to come all the way. Now look at it compared to this stripe. Oh, I want to change brushes. I mean, <clears throat> brushes. Okay, I'm changing to this is a little teeny wing right there. And I don't want to point on it. I want a curve. All right. So then what happens is coming right from here, we're going to come all the way out. And back. Okay. So now what I want you to see here, let's erase that first. Okay, so let's get see that we want this right here. And so we want this to come out to there. Now, what I want is it smaller right in here. Okay. So get, get where you're really comfortable with drawing. And I know if you're out there saying, I can't draw. You're going to see that I'm going to take you step by step each time so that you'll feel more comfortable with drawing. So look, we're going to come here. And then we're going to make some little lines here. Up, back, come back to here, come back to here. And I am just lightly making those little lines. All right. So same thing happens here. You're just going to break up some little, that thin see-through wing has some little breaks in here to give you a cool look. Now I'm gonna keep those very light and then maybe just rub them in so they don't show very much. Just ever so lightly. All right, so now we want, we can take and have, so you're not rubbing your fingers here. You can have see, scruffy brushes, look, and I can wipe away. So my fingers, because I put all that gray on my fingers, and so it's getting all over my paper. Okay, so you notice that this lead's a lighter than this lead. All right, so I'm going to come out here. Both of these came from right up here. That I mean, if you look close at the B, you will see where it's coming from. Okay. So you got to look at the very back and move forward, guys. Like what's way back there? This was in the very back. And then we came in here for this section and this is on top, but then this is underneath. But if I did that circle first, that helped me be able to see where to put this. And every time you curve here, you're getting it to look like it's rounded. Because I've had a lot of youth come in and say, I want those boots to look, or that helmet on my guy to look like it is rounded and not, I mean, like it's dimensional and not flat is what they say to me. So it's really fun to share with them how to make that happen. So I've got it sideways on my paper, but I want you to see that we are, this is too dark. I want to start in light. So it comes up. Now look, Four tight fingers is how long it is. So four tight fingers goes to here, All right? So I'm going to, it curves up. And out to here. 
and it's about two fingers wide. All right. Okay. And then this one's coming, let's see, it's a good three fingers down here. So it's coming here tight against the body and about right here, it starts curving. All right, now you can have a ruler, but I just use a sketch without a ruler, okay? All right, now what I have here is this, this curves up and then it comes down, all right? Now remember what I said about the pencil, how you can sharpen it on the sandpaper. You can do the same thing or go to a, um, a different paper towel or whatever and work on erasing that back off or on the sandpaper, okay? Okay, so before I get carried away, I might come over here because this one, besides that, this is going up. I want it down. See that? I was perking up. I want it to go down. But before I do that, I'm going to hold this pencil with my finger to right there. So then when I turn it, I'm going to go here and I'm actually out here. So I'm not quite the size I want to be. So look, I want to curve this. I'd like to show you how I fix it and change it and all so that you can see there again, let's say right here. There we go. All right, this one. Oops, a little bit further. And just a little bit makes a difference. You see that? Okay, so. I'm gonna erase that. And then this is going to go smoothly. I'm still, no, I'm gonna go back to my light one. I was using my, I need to go back to the H. And it's how the clay, I don't know. I've, I've studied it, but I don't keep, I don't remember it like I should, the difference in H and B. It was easy for me because H seemed like it was hard, <laughs> harder lead. Okay, so what I like to do is make a little bit of a gap, like I have a gap there. So I think that makes it nice and So, so it's easier to draw one side and then the second side, you're always trying to match it. So look, I wanted this to be up here and then come down and I wanted this to come here and then move up and touch, all right? And then as I came down on this, it's a little bit narrower. Okay, so there we go. We're going a little bit of shading in here, a little bit of shading in here. And then what I did out here is I came in and okay. Now we're going to come up and up. And then just do some divisions. They're not, the two of them probably would never be exactly alike. Are you having fun yet? To me, this just gives you an idea how to get it all ready. And then what's good about this, you can use tracing paper and trace the shape. All you need to do when you're going to put it on something is I trace the outside segments all these segments in here and this, and not all the detail, just 
the main shape and how it would go on to your painting. Okay. All right. Now, basically, we've got the hard part, but that's kind of fun. It's not super hard, right? All right. So I'm going to bring the head around. This is the furry part on the head, right? So this in here is all dark. But this, when I shaded here, remember, this is the light part a glow, a glow. This one is the yellow and white, but the background's all black. So usually I put all black and then add the white and yellow on top. All right. So here's white and yellow in here. Now I want it to look furry. So see, I'm doing a jagged area in there. Okay, so just go back for a tight zigzag. When I do an eyeball and I'm looking at the iris, uh, I'm getting that color. I'll do this and there just to make the shading show. Okay. Now there's different size stumps. You can use the little stump if you just have a small area you want to go in here and do or if you're focusing in an area that you don't want to get out of control with the bigger stuff. Whenever I'm teaching a group of teenagers or younger kids, they freak out at these stumps. That makes them really happy. <laughs> okay, so little things, like I want this wing, I'm gonna lay this down and shade lay this one down and shade under here okay so then i want this one to look like it's up underneath shaded by the top wing okay so i can come along here so there's enough lead still in the stump that it will shade the edge really nice. Okay. All right, so right in here is where the glare is gonna be. I'm going to use my larger stump for there. There's even a bigger stump than this. All right, then I came in here. Now, this I told you is going to be the glare. So the background of this is licorice. Same thing here. That's when it starts looking really rich. Is when I get my shading in there. Okay, so I'm going to continue along here. I need to know if you guys like these, if you want to see more of these. So please comment, please, please, and let me know what you think. It also gives me a clue on how many would be interested. Oh, you know what I did? Over here, I thought I had drawn a wrong spot, but it was the leg. <laughs> and I erased it. There we go. All right. So we don't want it to be a strong, defined line. We just want it to be um shaded there so you see where it goes okay now this let's see if it's this way this side i can do this side right here i can shade along here but then right here i can do a shadow all right so to do the shadow we're going to lay this down
put a little shadow under here. <clears throat> and as you can see, at any time you can quit and just stop at whatever point you're happy with. All right. So, all right. So now what's happening is I'm going to take my darker pencil, which I have the 2B. We can sit some time and just go through each pencil and show you, show you how they would shade, how they would uh, draw. Now see, that gave you the shadow underneath. See my shadow under there? Okay, so can you see? The only thing I would do is I left the plastic on here and you can pull the whole thing out. All right. See the little shadow in there with the corner. All right, you can also put a glare in here. A little bit of a glare. Same thing here. Because sometimes, like when I'm doing the eye, when I'm doing the eye, I would erase just one little point to give me a light. Now I'm pushing harder here. You can push hard after you you sure where you wanted it to be. And you saw how much I erased over here. You just needed to do light, light sketching, sketch, 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 which means you're barely touching the pencil, all right? And then as you, as you get going and you know where you want it to be, I come over here and I go around. I don't just try to freehand that. I steady myself so I can make that happen, okay? And I'm signing. And I like to say 2022. So I know for, for, um, for my journal, I like to slide these into my portfolio. And so that it's like that until I um, am ready to use it again. It's really kind of nice to know when you did it. Okay. So I can even just using the gray on here, I can even put a light shadow under my under my uh, antenna see that that one's up close and that one's a, a shadowed down more you see that and this right here you can shadow it out here gives you a little bit of a different perspective can you see so this is down, so the shadow is shining on it. This is right at it. So just have fun and let me know. I'm excited to hear from you. Please um, check out onestroke.com where you can find all of the supplies I'm showing you that we like to use. All right, see you later. Thank you.